Hello and welcome to the Phone Burner Training and I'm your host Jeff Osnes. Uh, if you want to reach out to me send me an email jeff at phoneburner.com and today's topic we're going to discuss importing context. Okay from your back office there's a couple different ways you can get to the import screen. The first one is from the home screen on the right hand side you'll see a button that will take you to the import contacts page. Also you can get there by going to contacts and on the left hand side you'll see the import button that will also take you to the import screen. And then lastly you can go to dial sessions and you'll see a button here that will take you to the import screen. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. First thing you need to do is agree to the terms and conditions so we'll click on agree. Once you're on the import screen I want to point out one thing over here on the right hand side. This is your import summary. You can import up to 10,000 contacts per month. This is not a contact manager limit. This is not a total lifetime limit. This is a monthly limit. So the system will allow you to import up to 10,000 contacts per month. If you run into issues and you need to be able to import more, just contact support and they'll be able to help you out. Now let's jump into the meat and potatoes here. So for sources, most of the time you're going to choose other CSV. So unless you're actually importing contacts from Hotmail, Yahoo, or Outlook, then you're going to use the other CSV option. So we're going to choose other CSV. Once we've selected other CSV, we either need to choose or browse our computer to find the file. So I'm going to do that now. Once you've selected the file, you can either double click on the file or single click and then open. And now you're going to see the name of your file listed next to that browse or choose button. Underneath the sources section is the tags section. I do have a video that covers tags in depth, but real quickly, tags are just organizational tools that you can use to kind of track contacts or groups of contacts. For example, if you're importing a list of contacts that you may have gathered through maybe a trade show and you want to tag them all with that trade show name, then you can do that at this point so that you don't have to tag them individually later on. And you can always find this group of contacts within your contact manager. So let me show you how that would work. Let's say I did a trade show and I'm just going to be generic in this and I'm going to create a tag called trade show. Now you'll notice when you're creating a tag you can create tags with spaces. So in order for the system to know when you're done creating the tag you need to click the enter button and once you do that you'll see the tag is now wrapped in blue and you can delete it or you can add an additional tag. Now the next option is to create a saved search. Saved searches can come in very handy because it allows you to quickly get to a group of contacts. I want to show you how this works so I'm going to go ahead and create a saved search. So I've created the saved search called trade show and once the import is done I'll be able to show you where you can access that. The next option is the contact manager folders. At this point you can choose which folder you want to import your contacts into. I'm going to go ahead and choose my enterprise folder. And then the last option is duplicates. The system can scrub your file against duplicates both in the file itself as well as other contacts within your contact manager. And there are a few options here. In the drop down menu you're going to see those options. The first one and the one that's selected by default is to scrub your contacts for duplicates for both email and phone number. So if the email or phone number already exists the system will skip the contact. The other options are to either scrub specifically based off phone number or email and then the last one is to just import everything as if it is a new contact. I'm going to leave it set to scrub for contacts based off of email and phone number. Once you've made these selections you just hit the continue button and that'll take you to the next page. Okay so on this screen the first thing you're going to see is the total number of contacts to be imported. In this particular case this file has 250 records. You want to double check this just to make sure that it looks right. Um, if it's a lot more than you expected or, or, or fewer than you expected, you may want to double check the file that you selected to import. The next option you will not see if this is the first time you've ever imported or if you've never saved a template. But if you've imported before and you've created a template, you'll see this option to select a previous import template that you've saved. We're going to ignore this for right now and we're going to go down to the next section. This section here that you're looking at right now is the most important section because this is how you tell PhoneBurner how to handle the document that you're just about to import. I want to help you understand the relationship between what you're seeing now on the screen and the CSV file you're trying to import. So I'm going to bring over the CSV file that I'm about to import and you'll notice that everything you see on this left hand side is being pulled directly from row one of the CSV file. 
So essentially what Foam Burner's done is it's taken everything from row one and it's displaying it to you here and asking you, okay, what do you want me to do with each of these items? So at this point, we just need to tell Foam Burner where to put all this data. So the first item is Phone. So to the right of phone, we click on the drop down menu, which is going to show us a list of all of the fields that currently exist in your phone burner account. This first section right here, between these dotted lines, these are existing phone burner fields. So these, these fields already exist in phone burner. So any phone numbers that you want to import, you need to make sure you import into one of the phone number fields here. So I'm going to go ahead and select phone work for this particular file. The next one is first, that one's a first name. Next one is last, that is a last name. Then we've got address, so we're going to select address one, city, city, state, zip code, email address. Here the system guessed that email was probably an email address, so it's already been pre selected for us. I'm going to scroll down a little bit here, then the next one is company. So company is not an existing phone burner field, it's part of the custom field section. So if we scroll down, I've got a company name field in my account, so I'm going to select that. Liquidity. So if I click on the drop down menu, liquidity is not a default system field. So I need to scroll down to my custom fields. Now you'll notice I don't have a liquidity custom field yet. So in this particular case, I need to select new custom field because this is data I would like to import but I don't currently have a place to put it in Foam Burner. And I'm just going to name the field in Foam Burner liquidity. So I'm going to copy liquidity from here and paste it in the text box over here. There are three types of custom fields that you can create in Foam Burner. You've got a text, checkbox, and date. Obviously liquidity is not a checkbox or date option so I'm going to leave that set to text. However, if I was importing something like a birth date, I might want to create a birthday field that is a date field. Or if I was in importing data that was that had a yes or no option, I might do a checkbox. But in this particular case, we're going to leave it set as text, and we're going to go on to the next field. So are they liquid? We're going to click on the drop down menu. I don't have an are they liquid custom field, so I need to do a new custom field. Are they liquid is a yes or no option, so I'm going to copy this over. I'm going to change it from text to a checkbox. The next one is invested in OG. Another new custom field. This one is going to be left as a text. Age. I don't have an age field, so another custom field. So we copy, paste, occupation, new custom field then copy and paste. So I'm hoping you're getting the idea here. Then we've got accredited, that's going to be a yes or no, so I'm going to click on new custom field and we'll do checkbox. So let's say the next three items I don't want to import. I just leave them set to don't import and the system will just skip over those fields in each contact record. So I don't need to edit my CSV file to delete those beforehand. I just choose not to import them on the import. Once you've gone through and mapped everything out the way you want it, you're going to see this next option. Check this box when the information you see above is an actual contact. Leave this box unchecked if the first row is column headers. It's referring to this left hand column. In this particular case, everything on this left-hand side is not an actual contact. It doesn't say Bob, it says first. It doesn't say Smith, it says last. So it's not an actual contact, it is column header. So I'm going to leave this box unchecked. And then the last option before I import is I need to choose whether or not I want to save this as a template. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a template so I can show you how that works when we come back to import another file. So I give this template a name and now I'm ready to import. So I click on the import button right here. And now the system is going to start processing my document. And the system will report to me in real time which contacts are being skipped and why. For example, this one right here is a duplicate, so it's skipped. This one right here is not a valid email address, so it was skipped. So if it's not a valid email address, duplicate contacts, the system is going to skip them. 
and you'll have a full report of anything that was skipped and why it was skipped. So you can go back and review those contacts within the file, update the information, and you could import the document again if you had a lot of data that was skipped. Or if you just don't care about these, you can move on and you're all set. So here our import is completed. We had 242 total contacts imported into the system. Now I can continue to my contact manager. Now I had imported these contacts into the enterprise folder. So if I click on enterprise, I can see that these new contacts have been added to the enterprise folder. Here I've got my trade show tag. Now I also created a trade show save search. So in my save searches over here, I can scroll through my save searches and here it is, trade show. If I click on that, that'll show me all of those contacts that were imported, which were 242 total contacts. Now before we close this out, I want to show you how the template works. Remember how we saved an import template? Let's go back through the import process and let me show you how that works. So we're going to click on import. We're going to agree. I'm going to choose other CSV. In this particular case, I'm just going to choose the same file I used before. I'm going to leave everything else alone here and I'm going to click continue. Now on this page when you're importing, you'll notice in the template section, the drop down menu now has a new Prime 22 import template. If I select that template, what you'll notice is everything down here is pre-populated based off of how I had mapped it out on the previous import. So all I need to do when I'm using a template is just double check to make sure everything lines up the way I would expect it to. If anything doesn't line up, I can update it. Once I confirm that the layout is the way I want it, I just click on the Import Your Contacts button and the system will process the document based off of these settings. And that's an overview of the importing contacts feature within the system. Once again, our phone burner pricing is $140 a month for unlimited or $67.50 for 450 minutes of usage each month. Now, if you're managing a team, we do offer discounts based off the total number of users. Here you can see a breakdown of when each of the discounts go into effect. Now, if you haven't set up your phone burner account yet, you need to do that today. And happy dialing.